Hello, how do you do? This is David for the Success Gene Strategy Podcast. And I would like to say hi to everyone. And let's give a big hand of applause for what's coming up next. Once again, this is David, and I'm happy to be your host for the Success Student Strategy Podcast. So tonight, we're going to talk about the state of ugly. What you see in others may be what you have in yourself, because like introduces itself to like. Like attracts like. Sometimes opposites attract. But when you're talking about seeing ugly in another human, then you have a baseline to see what may be in you. This is an old adage. It's in a lot of religious books and things of that nature. Let us pause right now and pay the station with one of our sponsors. Here at NDHglobal.com, we strive to build networks, net worth, and net gains with our investing partners. When potential income producing deals arrive, we align our strengths to provide relevant solutions to our club members. We offer a broad range of services for business owners, executives, and independent professionals within our investment club. These disciplines are pursued, real estate, transportation assets, and business development all wrapped into nationwide opportunities. We are knowledgeable, experienced, and successful. As we move forward with our state of ugly, I want to thank you for listening and thank you for commenting. One of the big situations that we have out here is that when we go to work, we have different scenarios. Um, There's people that backstab us. There's also people that love us. There's people that are in between. And there's also people that never say anything. We're going to talk specifically tonight about the different situations that make the state of ugly a bad place to be. So you meet another human, or you work with another human, and you you don't like how they are and what they have to offer. One of the reasons why you might not like what they have and what they have to offer is because what you see in them is what is in you. And it can be very repulsive. And that's one of the things when you're in competitive mind. I never compete. I stay in my creative mind because I'm only I'm only competing against myself by getting up, going to work, driving however I get there, or if I'm online, or if I'm catching a train or whatever, what have you, to and from work. Well, when you see that person, you might say to yourself, I don't like this person quietly. But the thing is, is who cares if you like that person and that's one of your workmates? Who really cares? Why should you care? You should only care about doing the work and increasing your income and increasing your sphere of influence. And by saying that, just mean that you focus totally on yourself and become that beacon because all the ugliness you see in them is the ugliness that is within you and that's what you have to change personally or you got to step up your game as they say one of the situations that makes for that to come out especially is on a team when you have disagreements Sometimes you might have a disagreement because you have that issue within you for the other person. And that's why we call it the state of ugly, because it never gets you anymore. It doesn't improve your relationship with yourself. 
It doesn't improve your thinking. It doesn't help you increase your monetary value. And it doesn't help you with your faith. Because all those things pull you down when you have that many issues before someone. More recently, I had to tell someone to take my name out of their mouth because they were out saying negative situations and vibes about me which was in the legal world, which is slander, because they weren't true. Did I hate the person? No. But I had an attorney on standby to send the cease and desist letter or correspondence. So rather than me being upset about it, I just kept moving because they didn't matter. They didn't matter what I'm trying to accomplish in life. And this is a big, big a situation that is hard because you can keep going through this situation and never move forward and then you're weighted down with issues and that's why the state of ugly is a state that you do not want to be in you want to just keep moving forward a while back I was on the job and of course I own the company <laughs> But I had an at will person that never do anything correctly with the protocol. Because they were at will, I could not fire them. But what I could do, because I provided for the system that they worked in, I locked them out the system. But I also sent them a lot of notes, and they were not issue related. They were notes about protocol and how to move forward and how to make more money. So these were things that they didn't want to follow. So I just said, I had a meeting, online meeting with them. I just said, look, we're giving you everything you need to be successful. What is it that we need to do for you? And they said, well, I just hate your guts. I said, okay. I said, well, what does that have to do with making money and being the best you can be? Because I'm providing you with the tools to be successful in this situation. We make money every day. They said, well, I just don't like you. I feel like you're riding me. And I said, well, how can I be riding you if I have to pay this much money out for the tools that's needed for you to be successful? So as a person talk, I disarmed them. And did I, did I want to teach them a lesson? No. I only stated the facts as they were happening. So I always talk in real time on demand. So they call me R. Todd sometimes. <laughs> so as they talked, the more they talked, the more I listened, the more I realized that the issue that they had was within themselves. It had nothing to do with me. All I did was provided the tools. So then I put a buffer between me and them and I got someone else to talk to them. And the problem that they were having with me was because simply that I was direct and it was nothing to talk about. My business, my situation, my tools that they were allowed to use to be successful in. I can talk about the tools I use or use at the time, but there's no need to in this particular broadcast. We'll have another podcast, I should say, about some of the tools that I use, and then I'll provide a way for people to buy those tools, and I may get a cut of what you purchase. So we'll talk about it in another, in another podcast. Um, one of the things that makes the state of ugly so great is that when you put those anchors around your neck, you can't move forward. And I can't reiterate this enough. But what makes it a positive situation is when you realize, okay, the person I'm talking to, maybe I'm giving out a bad vibe and maybe they're picking up on it subconsciously and it's causing us to have friction. So maybe I need to just change myself. Maybe I need to look at them and use them as a way when they're talking, the reason why I don't like them, maybe I need to check myself. Maybe I need to figure out, okay, why don't I like this person? 
because we have a similarities, we have some of the same situations, or we just, our personalities just don't connect. All of those things you have to ask yourself. And I'm sure there's a listing. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. I'm none of those. I'm just a person that's been in business for a lot of years. And a lot of times we have to deal with others that sometimes they come from a challenge situation. Sometimes they come from a privileged situation. And sometimes they bring those types of attitudes into the job site where we work, whether it be online, together, in an office, you know, anything in a group setting. Um, and this is what I, why I like the way of doing business, which I've been doing since 2008, of uh, being online and talking to people and able to see people and all of that stuff. So this is why it's important, important, excuse me there, state of ugly is that it makes you have to be better than you were before. And when you start getting better, then you're able to overcome those situations with the other person that you may be looking at and you may see a negative course of action within them, which is actually a mirror of what's inside of you so that you can make the adjustments. So now when I was talking to my employee, or my at will employee, I should say, and I don't know if that's a misnomer out here. You guys tell me, but at will personnel, they do at will. So I provided the tools. I provided what they needed. And then if they needed outside tools, we have a meeting and we get those outside tools. And then we just charge them a fee. And that's what makes them at will employees. We just charge them a fee to use those tools. So it's to my advantage to have the tools that they need and then to listen to the feedback that they give me about the tools that we need so that we can be nimble and we can make a change in 24 to 48 hours, sometimes 72 hours. And so that makes sure that that makes a maximum impact so everyone can make money with the stress level being played down. The situation is such that every person has a threshold. But the threshold has to be positive. And the reason why the threshold has to be positive is that when you are in a sales environment, which is what I am primarily in in my businesses, these are very important topics of conversation because you can bring in all the negatives from the outside world into your job. And it can affect your sales really quickly. So the state of ugly is one in which everyone has to make themselves better so that they can move past it. Right now, we're going to take another break for those that pay our bills. Thank you. Here at NDHglobal.com, we strive to build networks, net worth, and net gains with our investing partners. When potential income producing deals arrive, we align our strengths to provide relevant solutions to our club members. We offer a broad range of services for business owners, executives and independent professionals within our investment club. These disciplines are pursued, real estate, transportation assets, and business development all wrapped into nationwide opportunities. We are knowledgeable, experienced, and successful. And thank you for listening and welcome back. NDHG.world. You can go there and if you would like a consultation by me, you can go and put in consultations um, in the shop at the bottom of the website. And you can have a consultation for a fee for an hour and we can see what we can do for you and see if our corporate cultures line up what you're trying to accomplish and move on from there. The biggest thing in the world right now in this uh, COVID situation is that a lot of tempers flare because there's so much information and disinformation and misinformation out here about the COVID. 
So it produces a big state of ugly. One minute it's this, one minute it's that, the next minute it's, it's going around in a circle. You have to pick and choose what's good for you in these situations. So we have people arguing over if they should wear a mask and it's become politicized. I have no opinion, left, right, center, or anything whatsoever, independent, whatever. But I do know that we all have to do what's good for the greater good of society. And in America, some people need to really look at the Constitution and see what it says about emergency situations, whether it be your state constitution or whether it be the U.S. Constitution. Need to really look at and see what it says. And then we can kind of cut some of the ignorance out because they, you know, it's, it's been described as an emergency situation for the past so many months, year and a half, you know, whatever it is. So we have to do what's good for the greater good of society. Now, does that mean you run out and get the vaccine? I'm not saying that either way or one way or another. Does that mean you go out and not get the vaccine because of information? I have no comment on that one way or the other. I'm not a doctor. I just know my body and what I need to do for my body based on specific facts about my body. And how I think. So this is a very, um, very big situation that contributes to the state of ugly. One of the one of the problems of the state of ugly is that seeing negative sometimes means that you see negative within yourself. It's like looking at a mirror. But there's always a solution. So the solution is to, even though you see like-minded situations that's not conducive for you is that you recognize what they are by saying, okay, that's a mirror of me. That's why I'm picking this up so that you can move forward at a faster pace and say, okay, maybe I need to think about why it is and I can make this, I can make the adjustment. This is very important. And let's go back to the work scenario where you have somebody uh, backstabbing you at work or they got the Angawa spear, whatever it is, and they're stabbing you in the back. Okay, and I'm going to go on top of that and I'm going to paint a picture here so that for those that know, they know, and those that don't know, they'll know. So anyway, as you walk through the office, someone is sitting to do you. They're always hiding just out of your sight. They got this long spear, about a six foot spear with a big giant arrowhead on the end of it. So as you walk by, they stab you in the back. You stumble forward. And you try not to look down at the spear coming through your body. And then you go into shock. Then you fall. And then that's the end. Very gruesome, very bad, probably analogy. The antithesis to that is, as you walk by, you know that you see them at the corner of your eye. So you make adjustments so that they miss stabbing you with the spear. That's why the state of ugly, being viewed as a mirror to yourself, makes sense because you know what it is and you make the adjustments before those things happen. Many years ago when I worked at a job that I didn't know, um, I had a sit down meeting with my boss with another coworker because they said they just didn't like me. I said, okay. So at that time, I was like, why don't they like me? I was a lot younger. Why don't they like me? So we got before the boss and HR, and they sat out their list of complaints. So 
what I realized was in one of those lists of complaints was I was getting to work 15 minutes early and then I would clock in at the right time, but I would get my desk set up and my computer and all of those things that I needed, my little files from the night before. I made sure that I had everything ready to go so when, the clock, when it was time to clock in, I could clock in and go right back to my desk and I was ready to start immediately. They didn't like that because they always came to work late. So they sat in the cubicle, I sat in the cubicle uh, catty corner to each other, so they were back over my right side, so I could look over my right and see them, and they could see me. So their problem when we went to the meeting was actually not about me. Their problem was themselves because they could not get up in time to come to work on time. That was their problem. So their issue was never with me. Their issue was with themselves. So when I got in and talked to HR, I said, well, I'm here 15 minutes early every day. Um, I leave on time. I do my work. I take my breaks. Everything I do, I do it just like company policy says. Their problem was all their life they have been a slacker. And I'm not saying it in a bad way, but I'm just saying this is what they were. They were a slacker. So they always rolled the clock. I never really looked at the clock. I just did my work in time would fly, and I did my work at a proficient pace. And I also did my work and made sure that I, you know, provided backup documents for those documents that I was dealing with. I always made sure. And so they were mad because I worked efficiently. So every time we had a performance eval, I always got good marks and got raises on time and things that I needed, you know, for myself. But they were mad about it. It was not about me. It was just about them. And they couldn't keep up with the job because they had a failed situation at home. But they wanted to complain about me to HR because they wanted misery. So when I told HR, well, I'm here every day, 15 minutes. I never miss days. I work. I have good write-ups and things. You know, I shouldn't say write-ups, but I have good commendations for my bosses, my media boss, boss over him and the boss over him. And they could trust me. And they know that I would keep things confidential. This other person was a gossiper. Also, always around the water cooler at that time, back in those days, and always coming back from lunch late, showing up late, and it was just the whole thing and leaving early. So I would never join that group within that company. So I made sure that I did my job and I went home. I didn't necessarily make friends, but also just let my work speak for itself. So a lot of people, you know, to them, it was like I was against them and I was with the management. But we weren't unionized. <laughs> and then on top of that, management was like, it was at will employment. And management, management was like, if you don't work, you don't eat. So you don't get any bonuses. That's your problem. So they got mad because I kept getting bonuses because the management would put it up there. They had a thing like a bank. And it would put it up there with the electronic. And my name was always being number one or number two slot all the time. But I lived modestly. You know, and and I didn't drive a fancy car. I didn't at that time. I didn't. I just went to work, went home, went to work, went home. And those are things that it took me a long time to figure out that that's what you do. But that's what I was taught, so that's what I did. When it came time to, to move up in upper management, I moved up in upper management and learned the business. So that person's problem was always... Because I just did my job. I never showed any emotion. I just did what I had to do. I made the calls. I did all of that. Let us pause for let us pause for a nice little sound here. We're breaking the monotony. Here I am. Welcome back. Thank you for listening. Hopefully, I don't have a lot of narcissism tonight, but I guess I do. Because we're talking about the state of ugly, and this state of ugly is just a mirror into yourself. 
So I truly believe that. So it's really helping me. So I try to stay on my creative mind and not my competitive mind. So when my coworker tried to stab me in the back in the meeting, I just said, well, my work speaks for itself. You know, so that that was that. So fast forward a couple of years later, maybe 10 or 12 years later, I saw that same ex coworker because I had moved on and started my own situation. And um, so they asked me for a job. So I just, I don't have jobs. I just have at will employment. You got to be there on time and you got to follow protocol. That's it. Got to sign these docs. You'll start this day. So I got them on and got them in the training and got them what they needed to be successful. So this was the same coworker. I'm now the boss. So should I have hired them? No. But I saw that they needed help. So I told them, I said, we'll give you a shot. You know, like I give everybody a shot. Um, my business is fast paced, you know, <laughs> so it is what it is. So if they can't handle, they'll, they'll wash out themselves. Can't handle it. So anyway, I did the best I could to get them going. And they made a little money where they could have made more, but it was okay. That was all they could handle. So I accepted them for that. And also got them some more training and things that they needed so that they can catch up with the rest of the people. So they wouldn't be low man on a totem pole as far as receiving uh, payment income. So make a long story short, that situation never panned out because I had changed and grew as a person. I should have never brought this person on board, but I did to give them a chance. Did it make me weak? No. Did it make me weak? No. Did it make me more of the wiser? Yes. Because I was able to change some things in my protocols and day-to-day -day processes so that I wouldn't have those problems again. So I mitigated my risk. So that was a good thing that came out of it. That was the silver lining, I guess or the platinum qualifications, however you want to call it. So one of the biggest, biggest things are stubborn people. In the day's modern world, tech world, and when you're dealing with tech and you're dealing with just moving along and you have to, you know, a lot of industries have gotten really extremely high computerized and using multiple programs or multitasking, you have no room for stubbornness. And this is common in a lot of communities. When you become stubborn, you, you, you stop growing. And this is a statement of ugly because it's one of the traits. You cannot make it by being stubborn. It does not get you anywhere. And this is, you know, a lesson that a lot of people have to learn. I had to learn it. I'm not saying that I was stubborn, but I was falling into those ways as I got older. So I stopped it and checked myself one day and said, okay, what am I stubborn for? It's not increasing. I want to live in a world of abundance. And so I started living in a world of abundance and I realized that there was no room for being stubborn. And there was also no room for judging others. It was only room for honoring others with non-judgment and making sure that I was following my own script at all times. That was conducive to me and I was making an impact by doing that. So that's how I chose to live today. So, and this is good advice because it applies to every industry, no matter what it is. And it applies to regular life. Am I a guru? Maybe, <laughs> you know, what I am is just David. And this is my podcast. So this is what I'm talking about. The biggest situation that makes for a positive outcome is always the one where you can step outside of yourself and look within yourself and make those adjustments so that you can move forward in a positive manner. This is very important. This is why the statement of ugly is important. The state of ugly is important because when you have a statement of ugly, you're saying that person is ugly. Okay. But the state of ugly says, look, it's only a state. It doesn't have to stay that way. 
So that's very important. And we're not talking about looks per se. We're just talking about what's inside that person. So you got some people that are just driven. You got some people that are lazy. Some people can do things at the last minute. Doesn't matter how they do it, just as long as they get it done. This is what I found out in business and in life. As long as it's legal, it's going to be good. As long as it's within the law, and that's how I look at things. That's how I run my shop. Okay, we can provide you with the tools to be successful, and then we can change those tools in you know 48, 72 hours, or five hours of example, so that the whole company benefits and everybody increases their profits. So, and that's what we want. You want to increase profits. You want to mitigate risk and you want to decrease expenses. So it's very important with those three topics in mind. That's very important. So when I do my consultations and my coaching, that's what I really go by. Because an idea is only an idea if it isn't funded. And that's very important. You got to look good for the bank. You got to look good for the investors. And that's a very important process so sometimes it takes years some people come in and they already got a plan so those are things that we work on on the daily right now we're going to take about a i would say about a maybe a two minute intermission here so if you're driving down the road you know hopefully i'm not detracting from your drive and in no way am i in Am I admitting any kind of guilt or taking responsibility for your actions? All right. We have a song coming up. It's called Up From the Ashes. Here at NDHglobal.com we strive to build networks net worth and net gains with our investing partners. When potential income producing deals arrive, we align our strengths to provide relevant solutions to our club members. We offer a broad range of services for business owners, executives and independent professionals within our investment club. These disciplines are pursued, real estate, transportation assets, and business development all wrapped into nationwide opportunities. We are knowledgeable, experienced, and successful. Close our little intermission, maybe a little bit longer uh, than two minutes, but just something that I want to do it um, try today and just get that done. So, anyways, get you to think about just what I'm saying and to get you, you know, to formulate some opinions or whatnot. Um, 
one of the one of the things I always like to say is that in the abundance world, there's always room for growth. And it doesn't matter where the growth comes from. It just matters that the growth is there. And what makes it great is that it benefits you no matter what. And that's very, very important. That's why we, in this podcast, in these podcast episodes that I'm doing, I always try to um, come from a point of view of just being positive and promoting the abundance lifestyle. Because I believe that everybody has a chance to be great if they chose to be, and everybody has a chance to work on themselves if they chose to do that. One of the best ways to be through the state of ugly is just to understand what you're trying to accomplish, whether it's your job, your life, or just uh, how you're day-to-day living. Because you can be in that competitive mindset and it just takes you down because you're not really understanding and completing yourself. And to complete yourself, you got to keep moving forward. And this is a hard thing to do to stay in your creative mind. It's very hard. And we'll have a podcast about that. This affects everyone. It affects everyone different, the state of ugly. Um, the statement of ugly is the one you got to get rid of. You got to honor others with non judgment and just keep going. And just say, okay, what I see in them is probably what's in me. And this might be the vibe I'm giving off that rubs them wrong. Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it's not like that. Right now, because my podcast is growing, I'm probably going to have to do a show. Like every day at a certain time so I can get some live chats going on. Um, Because the content I have is uh, really uh, seems to be hitting home by some of the people that email me and stuff. So I want to make sure that everybody gets their chance to hear me. And I want to make sure that I'm on the right path with myself. And it's very important that this happens accordingly. So just be looking for my show in the future. I may change my... uh, look of my podcast. I'm not sure yet. Um, So I'm just going through it right now. So just bear with me. I always go live. I don't go back and I don't edit. I just do what I do off the top of my head. So a lot of times I'm in my creative mind. So it takes a while for me to get to that next show, which, you know, I probably shouldn't say, but this is how I'm going through it. So um, a lot of times things just come to me. And then I said, okay, I need to speak on it or these things. You know, it just it just is what it is. But hopefully it can help some people out here. Um, I'm all for the greater good of society, but I'm also for making money also. So it's not bad. <laughs> I don't make money at all costs. I make money as it comes to me. I'm doing right. You guys can get the link over there, uh, paypal.me slash NDH Global Inc. So NDH Nancy David Bold Global Inc. G L O B A L I N C. And I don't beg, but if you would like to support me and you would like for me to have more episodes that are beneficial to mankind or humankind, as they say, then you can do that. One thing, one thing that I did not do at the start of my podcast today was. I do talk from a male's perspective. So, but if you're a pronoun, all pronouns are welcome here. Just put in your pronoun when I talk that. Just put in your pronoun and keep stepping. So I have no issues with that life, with those lifestyles. That's between you and your maker. It has nothing to do with me. Um, I mean, that's just, you know, just what I say all the time in my specialized podcast. So, um, I just thought I needed to get that out the way. Normally, I do it at the start, but I decided to do it later on because I just wanted to talk off the top of my head and what was pertinent to this particular uh, podcast today. The whole purpose in life 
is to live with abundance. So it is important that all of us out here, no matter who we are, what we are, whatever labels, whatever, whatever it is, pronouns, whatever, that we all attempt to move forward every day. By me doing a podcast, it helps me to move forward because I can see where I'm going and I can see what I'm doing and I can hear it and then I can I can feel good about what I'm saying. So it's important. So right now, we're going to go ahead and sign off and we're going to tell everybody blessings out there and then we're also going to tell everybody move forward as much as possible and whatever you have don't worry about it just keep moving forward it'll soon be there if it's meant for you if it's not meant for you go on to the next situation so without further ado this is david from success blue strategy podcast signing off and i'll leave you with some claps some storm music and up from the ashes so you guys have a great night and a great day tomorrow if you're already in tomorrow just have a great day thanks again for listening we appreciate you Once again, thank you for listening. And once again, have your best day, your best night, your best morning. Be good, be great. Do what you need to do for yourself and be better every day. Thanks for listening.